We're live, baby. What's right. going on, bookkeeping beer <laughs> and BS? It's not even Wednesday. It's not even 8 p.m. Central, but yet we're here live with Keith Kalfas, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, because he came to me yesterday and just had uh, an interesting epiphany, and we started going back and forth, and we we're like, we it, this can't just be something we know. We got to share this thing. We got to get out there and talk about this thing. Um, Keith, I'm going to let you set up what you told me, and then I'm going to get into uh, the rant that I went on in response to your setup. So hit me with what you hit me with yesterday. Yeah, you definitely went on a rant, and I want to make sure, can you hear me clear? I got you loud and clear, man. All right, so I hit up Dan on Voxer yesterday because I kind of had this epiphany, and uh, it's about stocks and cryptocurrency. By no means am I an expert in either, but... You know, I would not, I would argue that I don't have an addictive personality, yet I'm embarrassed to say I stayed up till eight o'clock in the morning uh, one night over this past winter because I literally couldn't stop refreshing my Coinbase and crypto accounts. And I was, I had this emotional addiction to watching it go up and down. This is kind of new to me. And what happened was by, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, I had actually cashed out some money and I made a profit, which, which is cool. But I was also kind of disappointed in myself because I looked at it from a kind of a higher level overview. Of it. I'm like, that's a huge distraction. Now I've been up all night. I haven't gotten any sleep. And I asked Dan about it because uh, I'm a client of Blue Skies Bookkeeping and they're doing an amazing job. And it's opened up a whole new world to me of, of getting my books done now for over, I don't know, almost a year now. And so I'm like, you know, Dan is the perfect guy to throw this at. And then Dan says to me, you know, stocks and crypto and all that stuff is great. But you told me something very interesting, this perspective that is also debatable. It's a little bit controversial. And it's that what you said to me was really enlightening and it actually reframed and, and got my focus back on track was that you used to do all that stuff too. And you, of course you have stocks and things like that. But when you do the math and you do your own PL statements and you look, you can see that by focusing on your service business and just going out and crushing it every single day with a predictable process, you can make way more money and higher returns right now by doing that. And that doesn't mean to not pay attention to stocks or crypto, but that one piece of advice, I actually went and told a good friend of mine because we're literally up all night obsessing over crypto. And, um, and I told him what you, and, and that reframed his focus as well. And so I want to, I want to talk about that. And I want to ask you about that. Yeah. Crypto is so goofy because it's just sexy, man. Like it sounds so cool. And it's, it's a, I don't know if it's a fad or not. We won't know if it's a fad yet unless it goes away. Right. But like, it's got all the makings of a fad uh, at the start. Like it's just freaking sexy. Um, and we forget as business owners that we already have something really sexy. Most of the world is afraid to do what we do. Um, and like, that's our investment. We already have an investment. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't invest in other stuff. And, and this was part of my rant yesterday, which is I spent, you know, five years in college studying this stuff. The fifth year was, was partially educational, partially, you know, personal education, having some fun. Uh, and then I spent three years studying the CFA program. And that's a three-year program. And luckily I got out in three years and passed all the exams. I'm not a CFA because I'm cheap and I didn't pay for the letters, but that whole program, the Chartered Financial Analyst Program is all about assessing investments, if they're a good return or not, and then how to keep track of them over time and like how hedge fund managers are, are made or, or lost, right? Where they make their money at. And, and the funny thing to me was I spent three years to basically be equipped to be a hedge fund manager. And the number one thing I learned is I'm just not going to do any of it. Like, all that happens, the best of the best of the best in the world hardly have a chance of beating the market. Like maybe a few people do, but you can argue like it's just, a, of course, statistically, some people are going to beat the market, but more often than not, it's just a fluke and they, they eventually are mean reverting, which is when you're playing that investment game and like historically you can't beat the market and historically the market was a bunch of humans. Now the market is a bunch of computers and algorithms and like, you're not going to beat them over time. Like, yeah, you might have glimpses of what you think are brilliance, but you're playing a game that like, you can't compute as fast as these computers can compute and you're just using gut. So 
uh, what that education would tell you is that you might as well just invest in the market. So I, I studied for eight years to eventually just say, I'm just going to invest in mutual funds and spend my time working on something that I can control the output of. Instead of betting on somebody else, I'm going to bet on myself. Um, and hence why I'm a small business owner and why I'm here talking to you. Uh, I could be out managing hedge, hedge funds and acting like I know what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, you're just running a computer and the computer's making all the decisions for you. Um, so anyway, that was my rant. And I, I've got the three reasons why not to invest in crypto. You want to hear them? Yeah, you ready? share it. All right. So don't invest in crypto because you don't know shit. You don't know anything about crypto. Um, maybe a few people do, but we are not educated in crypto. And you should not invest in stuff that you don't understand. Again, you're a small business owner. You already are invested in something you do understand. Don't take the money you make on something you understand and invest it in something you don't understand. Don't invest in stuff that you don't understand. Because uh, you're going to, when you lose money, you're going to blame something else. And when you make money, you're going to take credit for it. You're setting yourself up for like the thing that annoys us about most of our employees, right? Uh, so don't set yourself up to be that person. Uh, second is to Keith's point, it's a massive distraction. Uh, you're, you're spending your time thinking about things that you can't control. And so what are you going to do different? Like you're either going to put your money in or put your money out. You're not going to like tell the cryptos, you're not going to do anything to make them more or less valuable. They're just going to do what they're going to do. And it's computers that are making them do the things that they're doing anyway. Um, and the third reason is you already have an investment. You have your own personal stock market. When you generate a return, you get to put it back into your business and generate a, a bigger return on the return you already generate. So you talk about like, um, you know, interest rates and, and accumulating value and cumulative growth. That's from investing your returns in the thing that's generating you the return. So you earn a 10% return upon a 10% return and it's exponential growth. Your business can do that. When you make more money and spend it on marketing, I'm not, I'm not talking about equipment, like equipment will let you do the job, but marketing is really your own personal stock market in your business. When you make money, spend more on marketing to grow your business. That's what you get a return on. That's what brings in more revenue. And it's literally your own personal stock market. So why go invest in crypto when you have your own personal stock market that you get to make decisions on, you get to control, and you get to reap all the rewards of it. So, you know, you just uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna recap, but you just gave me another going. epiphany. Uh, it's kind of an underlying theme I'm picking up of what you're talking about, and I and I I'm I'm a student here. Is you're talking about uh, with your service business, you retain the buyers list, all the clients' names, emails, addresses, information about that, and you control that. And there's more. Um, it's more in your favor that it's more a, a, a sustainable income. Mm -hmm. revenue gen generating model versus something like like crypto could be peaking this whole year but then it could literally crash and be gone in in 12 months and when you put all your attention into that well what's going to happen in 12 months so i'm looking at things now that are well what's economic economically viable and sustainable for the long term and this is all new to me as even as i'm talking about this because i have that kind of um you know when when i I triple triple my investment on crypto and I was so excited. I'm like, this is free money. Oh my God. The age old fantasy of making money doing nothing is what kept me up on the phone with my buddies. So three o'clock in the morning as, but it's easy to think that you're an expert in something just because it's working. Right. Well, what about right. when it's not working? And that's really enlightening. Yep. And you, yeah, you could, you know, it's an investment. You should not get into investment unless you can afford to lose all of it. Like that's, that's a golden rule is investing. Like don't put money in there unless you can afford to lose it. Um, chances are you're not going to lose all of it, but in this stuff, you sure as hell could if it's, if it is just a fad. Now, uh, counter to that, I think you could argue the dollar is also a cryptocurrency because I'm pretty sure a bunch of, a bunch of us just got digits put into our bank accounts and nothing got printed. So the dollar is a cryptocurrency at the end of the day, right? Like it's no different. It's just digits on a computer screen. We've just all already agreed to use it is the only difference. Um, so I'm not saying, I'm not saying like Bitcoin and Doge and like a couple of people are like, oh shit, now I got to sell all my Doge. Um, like I'm not saying they couldn't become viable. Um, just we all need to agree to use them in order for them to actually be a currency. Like that's how currencies work. So 
I'm not saying like it's not an interesting thing. I'm just saying it's more reliable and consistent and beneficial for you to spend your time on your business than spending your time investing in somebody else's shit. You already got way cooler stuff to invest in that you get to control the outcome of. And yeah, your business could could take a hit too, right? Just like Doge or Bitcoin could take a massive hit and you can lose all your money tomorrow. Your business can take a massive hit. You know, COVID happens or something dramatic like that happens. Um, yeah, our businesses can go up and go down, but at least you get to make decisions. You're in control. You're the only decision you have when you're invested in something like that is do I hang on or do I sell this shit before it goes to zero? And that's not a fun decision. In your business, you can do different recruiting stuff, do different marketing stuff, sell some assets, only serve your highest value clients. Um, so you have way more decisions, way more outs in an investment like that than you do when you're just buying some coins. I feel like I'm getting an ass whooping right here. I like this. So, hey, you tripled your money. Now's a good time to sell it and go buy some marketing. Yeah, I. Uh, that's a good. That's a good idea. I'm. I'm. A, I think. Uh, I probably only have a thousand left of my own money. I've been able to take out of the investments of all these different coins, and now I'm playing with house money. But yeah. it's, it's a great learning lesson. I, I I got this book called um, The Intelligent Investor, and I'm trying to get my way through it, and it's uh it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And so many learning lessons here. So what is real? Like what, what, if you could look at all the things, what is the most real thing that is the most long-term in business and so, what'll make um, you money consistently? So I invest in three things. Um, in like three, no, four, four different areas. One is my business and like, I'm going to maximize my investment in my business until I see diminishing returns. I can't, if I had a hundred thousand dollars, I might not go buy $100,000 of marketing right now. Um, it needs to be reasonable. I need to, I still need to match capacity to demand and hire people that go along with the market I'm spending. So like, I'm going to invest in my business. I'm going to invest in a Roth IRA, like have a good financial advisor that understands uh, traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs, put your money into tax advantage things, which means like you get a return, even if nothing else happens, like you save money on the taxes, either uh, before income taxes, or you pay the taxes later whether it's a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, or a 401k, which is business owners, maybe your spouse has has a 401k. Like we put 20 grand a year into my wife's 401k. We put um, 11 grand a year into Roth IRAs between the two of us. And then we invest in blue skies. Like those three things should happen every year and max those out. You get a return right away, right away, um, just from the tax advantage. Uh, ah. and, and then, and then like a whole life insurance policy where you're building cash, it's good to have some of that so that when you're retired and I'm not a financial advisor, so can, I can't explain all the benefits, but whole life insurance has some cool features where you can borrow against it. It, uh, in goofy tax years, when you're retired, you can use that money and basically not pay taxes on it and wait till maybe, you know, if we have a bad four year stretch when we're all retired and taxes go massive, you can pull off of those funds. Um, so anyway, uh, use those tools before you make massive speculative investments, like fill those buckets up first, invest in your business until you don't have anywhere to put out, put the money, 401k, Roth IRA, and probably some whole life insurance and, and not even for the life insurance, but for the investment side of it, once you're retired, um, it's a cool bucket to have money in. Um, like I'm a finance guy. I literally spent eight years studying this stuff. And I have a financial advisor and yeah, like I enjoy sitting down and talking to him. I just met with him last week and we went over everything we had, like do that before you do a doge thing. Cause there's probably other opportunities that are literally like doge you had to put money into. Um, yeah. You got to invest your money to make money, but there's certain things that literally give you a return without even having to go up like a 401k or a Roth IRA and some of those stuff, just because of the tax advantages of them. So put your money in the easy things first. And again, the best money managers in the world hardly beat the market and they don't do it consistently. So why would any of us try to beat them? It just doesn't make sense. Like why would our customer try to do a landscaping project better than you, Keith? What, what on earth would they be thinking? They should just hire you to do it. Um, so don't try to be a speculator. Just like take the market average, like be invested. I'm not saying don't invest, be invested just understand you're probably not going to beat the market over time. So why try 
you you are going to beat the market in your landscaping business or your window cleaning business or your pressure washing business. If you focus on that, you're going to kick ass. We know there's plenty of customers out there. We know there's plenty of money to be made and we know what the investment is. We know how to, how to market in those businesses. So focus on that. Um, that's worth your attention. All right. Sweet. And conclusion here. I have a couple of questions. I'm actually taking notes on what are your, what you're saying. Uh, I went to uh, Vanguard and I started an account and I'm investing in something called the Vanguard Star Fund, but this was recommended by, who's the guy who, he's the famous author, the finance guy, start late, finish rich. You're talking- uh, This God. guy's huge. He's been with Tony Robbins and all these guys. Like, I was going to go Dave Ramsey, but that's probably not him. No. So anyways, uh, that, but where are some good places to, that you recommend to set up a 401k Roth IRA, get whole life insurance, like websites and things? So, so I use Northwestern Mutual. If you need my guy's name, I'll give him to you. He's right at working with business owners. Um, I don't get a referral fee or anything. I actually tried to have him on bookkeeping beer and BS. And he's like, Northwestern Mutual won't let me go on and give unsolicited, unsolicited opinions. Um, but I think have a good financial advisor. I've, I've gone through like five of them and this is kind of my guy. Um, but, you know, a Northwestern Mutual and Edward Jones, wherever it is, they have tools that we don't have access to. Um, if you have access to a 401k, you know, if you're a business owner, maybe your spouse does, max that son of a bitch out. Um, Vanguard's a good one. Vanguard has really cheap fees, like for, for management of any fund, like their fees are really low. And mm -hmm. Northwestern Mutual can even like get you into them or manage them for you too. Um, uh, and then like a Roth IRA, we rolled ours over to, to Northwestern Mutual and they can manage them. But we used to have ours set up through Charles Schwab. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's the bank that I use. And then I would have my investment accounts right there and just max out your Roth IRA every single year. Like you're going to want that bucket when you're 60 years old, you know, set aside money now and kind of like squirrel it away from yourself. Um, and it's, it's amazing how much it builds over time on you. I, when my wife and I looked at it last week, I damn near shit a chicken at just like, we've been doing this since we were 21 years old, since we started jobs. And I, I was like blown away at how much we've stashed away just because we're consistent with it. And we don't, we have not invested in a cryptocurrency um, and based on how much we've been able to stash away, we're never going to need to. So we're going to keep, keep running the program, you know? Good for you, man. So, uh, and last year was the best year I've had so far. And I I'm still, I mean, I'm looking at guys like you and guys and learning from you guys, but I started having these thoughts where I'm going on Zillow saying, Oh my God, I can actually afford a bigger home or, but can I really afford that stuff? And I started digging into what you're talking about and digging into like Mike Dillard and these, these finance guys and saying, I think the most important thing to do is just keep reinvesting back into keep the lifestyle exactly the same and do stuff like what you're doing. So in the future, you got a, a huge nest egg and you're comfortable. Uh, yeah. And then another thing that helped me tremendously, uh, your, your bookkeeping services and the time that I spent with you getting all that set up and doing the deep dive, it literally, uh, thanks Dan, it changed my life because yeah, man. I mean, being able to see every penny in and every penny out and knowing that you guys you know, are drilling me for all the transactions while getting all the categories set up. And when sitting down with my accountant, instead of giving him, I would give him everything as organized as I can. And I sit down with him quarterly, but this time giving him you know, a balance sheet and P and L statements, my accountant was like, Oh, sweet. Good job. And the funny thing is that, that my accountants were charging me an arm and a leg to go through all that stuff. Right. Yep. And, yep. uh, huge, huge relief signing with you guys. And I'm a super happy client. So I'd recommend you guys to anybody. We, yeah, appreciate it. I, uh, so one, one question here, I think this is a good one. Cause this is, this is the trap of the cryptocurrency or any, any like stock market thing. So Austin Blown had said tripled my money in three months. Why, why shouldn't we do this again? And like, that would be like saying I went to Vegas and I nailed it. Why wouldn't I just keep going to Vegas over and over and over again? It's like, well, we all know what's going to happen. If you, the, the more, the longer you gamble for, the more it's guaranteed you're going to lose. So if you're, if you're, if you go and gamble and hit it big, you should just get out, right? Like, just like be done and never do it again. Cause, cause rarely do people end up on top. Usually the problem with having success is that it keeps you engaged for too long and you keep thinking it's going to repeat itself. But again, back to point number one, and I'll reiterate my why not to invest in crypto. One, because you don't know anything about crypto. 
Two, it's a massive distraction and you can triple your business by spending time on that too. And that's way more sustainable than tripling a cryptocurrency. And three, you have your own personal stock market, which is your marketing and your business. So, so spend the time on that. I'm not saying people aren't making massive returns on this stuff. I'm just saying it's not consistently repeatable forever. So don't build an expectation on short-term success. Build an expectation on what rationally you know is a true thing that you can control. You, you're not going to build a, a lifetime investment strategy on I go to Vegas every month. That's not a strategy to grow your wealth over time. That's a strategy to go have a good time. Two different things. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Because I like, don't get me wrong, you can make a lot of money on this stuff. You can lose a lot of money on this stuff too. Yeah. Hey. Um, so you know, don't 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 get confused with uh, short term results versus long term probabilities. Last uh, week, uh, the crypto market crashed by like eighteen percent, and you know, everybody watched their portfolio drop. And I, I was looking at my account and I'm saying, now, Keith, you promised yourself next time it does this, you're going to buy more. And I was like, oh, and I, and I started just going through and buying more of it and crossing my fingers. And then it's starting to go back up. And, and I'm doing that because I, I want to make free money. <laughs> and, and I don't know, man. It's fun and exciting. Do you, do you like, but I, I shouldn't like be having this money? Huh? I said, do you like losing free money? No, hell no. So, yeah. But the only reason that I'm doing that is because I have a past positive experience. In 2017, I started buying 20. Oh, I got a story to tell you. Oh, let's go. Um, 2010, my friend, he would not stop pestering me, telling me I need to buy crypto. And He's like, it's called cryptocurrency, this stuff called Bitcoin. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? This is a scam. He's like, no, man, you need to go buy some of the stuff. So I, I started an account and I went in. I was so broke. I was working a dead end job for like, I don't know, 13, 14 bucks an hour. And I went in and I typed in a hundred bucks and I typed in my debit card number and I was pacing around saying, oh, I can't afford this hundred bucks right now. <laughs> and, um, I probably didn't, but I don't actually remember if I bought it or not. And um, I have the old hard drive and it's sitting on, uh, I actually have the hard drive from 2010 and I have to go through and look and see if I'm a million or not. And somebody said to me, why aren't you doing that right now? If, if I knew I had a hard drive that had, you know, possibly, you know, $9.3 million on it. Cause I just know deep down inside, I didn't buy the shit. So here's an epiphany that I had recently that kind of piggybacks off of that. And I, I, I came to this epiphany and I, and I kind of did a rant on this the other night on bookkeeping beer and BS when I had Zagon, which is um, we have these employees that like are falling apart at our jobs. Um, we had a customer service person that like quit after like three days. Cause they said it was too stressful. It's like, what, like, what's so hard about answering the phone and like taking a customer service call? Like you're doing mostly sales and some customer service. We've had people in the field that do the same thing. They just fall apart. And they, they, it's, it's a, I account it as a function of the everybody wins uh, syndrome. Like everybody gets a medal syndrome. They're not used to losing. They, they're not equipped to handle stress and, and difficult situations. They like can't handle a loss and it tears them apart. They don't know how to solve problems. Um, and there's something that, like, they just totally lack resilience. And there's something unique about us as business owners that we're super resilient. And if you look at a lot of the most successful ones, like the Brandon Vaughn's, the Patrick Clark's, you hear some of the stories about the shit they went through. And you're like, oh, no wonder why you're so successful. Cause you encounter some bullshit and you just freaking walk right over it. Whereas like some of these people encounter a little bit of bullshit and they like run away and they fall apart and they get in the fetal position. The people that have gone through the <laughs> hardest, most difficult things are so freaking resilient. Like it takes a lot to deter them because they've overcome so much um, that they just don't, they don't fall apart when something gets tough. We, we kind of have this mentality that the harder things get, the more we're like, no, F that, like I can overcome this. Um, and so there's, there's something about like the resiliency of overcoming those things. And, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to finish this story, even though I kind of lost my train of thought there. Cause I, I do that every once in a while. 
I was riding around with my buddy Ben Smith here in Minneapolis. He runs Marvel Sewer and Drain. They do a couple million a year and they're like just scratching the surface. They're a, a phenomenal business and he's a really good leader. Um, he has like delegated everything in his business. And he went from, he used to, he used to be a subcontractor, you know, just him with a pressure washer and some drain tools, like fixing people's clogged drains and making decent money to now he's making really good money running a really successful business. And he's got an awesome team. Like I, I know his whole team, they would die for him. Like he's just, he's got the perfect business doing what he loves, what he's really good at with an amazing team. And I was riding around with him the other day and he's like, I'm like really bored and I'm kind of miserable. Um, cause I've delegated all the hard things. And so I kind of like bringing this all together, kind of had this epiphany, like it's the pride of doing hard things that keeps us going. And that like, is the driver for us to go do the next hard thing. And those people that fall apart have never experienced, they're, they're used to being given everything. They don't have the pride of when the chips are down, they overcome something. Cause that's what like deep down inside, that's what motivates us and keeps us from being depressed is the pride of doing really fucking hard things. And when we do them, we feel on top of the world and yeah, it sucks. But once you're over it, you don't remember the pain. You just remember the gain. Um, and so Ben is getting like bored because he doesn't have, he's not out, you know, in a sewer, literally like crawling around and shit, solving people's problems for him. He has other people doing that. He's not running the finances of his business. He has other people doing that. He's not running the, the team of the business. He has an operations manager doing all that. So he's just kind of like out of the game. And he doesn't, he doesn't have hard, he's delegated all the hard things. And he's like, I don't like, what am I going to do? I like, I need to break something just so I have a reason to fix it. In which we see business owners do that all the time, right? They like self-sabotage their damn business. Um, but now back to the crypto, the, there's a downside to making money doing that stuff, which is you didn't really do anything hard. And winning money is way different than earning money. When you build something badass that you pour your heart, sweat, tears, all the things into, and it makes you a lot of money, that's the pride. That's what life is all about. You get a lot of joy out of that. When you make $5,000 on crypto, doesn't it feel a little bit different? Like you feel like you scammed somebody or like the government sent you a check. To me, there's a different feeling. And that's like, yeah, it's like uh, um, Steven Ranella from Meat Eater. He's got a great way of putting this. It doesn't have to do with money, but it has to do with enjoyment. There's type one fun, which would be uh, riding a roller coaster and woohoo that was fun but you don't like go back and talk to you remember that one time we rode that roller coaster like nobody has ever said that it's fun at the time and then you forget about it because there's no pain right there's no pain in like investing in crypto unless you lose it all um type two fun is like you're hiking up a mountain and it sucks and like he he facilitates it with like a hunting example of like you're out there for four days and it's raining and snowing and you slip and you get hurt and then you finally like harvest the animal that you were out there for and then you got to pack it like five miles out on your back four trips and it sucks and then a year later you're like remember that awesome trip that we had um that's type two fun when you remember it that's what our businesses are we love to like complain about how hard it is and we like empathize with each other and we build each other up but we love it like it's type two fun it's the thing that we're so proud of right um so invest in that like that's where you're building your memories that's what like keeps you going making a few thousand bucks on crypto neato, but it's not going to keep you going. Dude. I like it. Rant, hey, rant real over. quick. This is a little off uh, topic here, but I'm, I'm a social media guy and I'm a, I'm a tech head. And like in the background, you see, see that, that crazy weird gray thing. It looks yeah. Like a weird. It's called a road blimp. And there's uh, this is, this is about you actually. It's a microphone. And what it does is it captures the whole bottom end of your, it, it's a, it makes your voice sound like, whoa, like professional voiceovers, like Hollywood studios type stuff. Like I've always dreamed of having that. And here you have this, this is the Shure SM7B. You might've seen this on podcasts yeah. and you are a phenomenal speaker. And, and as you were talking just now, I realized you are a busy dude and you're, you're running your businesses. You have so much going on. And then when you come on here live, you get to like exhale and vent out all this this stuff going on in your head but everything you're saying is a value right it's it's it's, it's like a it's the um the dan plata show if you invested in a dope ass microphone like a four or five hundred dollar microphone because then i talk to you on voxer or in person you have this masculine like resounding voice and 
the microphone you're using right now isn't capturing that. This is mine. <laughs> what is that? Hey, your sounds good. I like this was an upgrade after my first microphone, so I feel like at least I spent thirty bucks <laughs> on it. Dude, dude, how is the, how is a bookkeeping guy going to spend more than like thirty bucks on a microphone? Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, Amazon, bro. Four and a half stars. This microphone looks great. I'm going to I'm going to send you some Amazon links to some really dope microphones because I think that I, I'm picturing a whole podcast right now and everything. And if people could pick that up, that is the brashiness that you have in your voice, your points would get through times 10 and it would just it would hook, bro. It's you won't even be able to handle it, man. dude. It'd be amazing, bro. I can't wait to hear it. when's your podcast coming out. Uh, I need to actually that's like on my to do list is I need to turn <laughs> all these things into a damn podcast because right now it's just living on the Facebook and the YouTube world, but we got to make her a podcast. But you're a perfect example of a guy who focuses on his business and you keep the main thing the main thing, right? So maybe I, I didn't always because we've had so many businesses and it took me a while to realize that. And now I have business partners running all of our businesses and I'm running this. Like, this is my thing. So now I get to focus on this. I still like on my quarterly list is to get out of all day-to-day -day bookkeeping because I still have like four things I have my hands on. I just can't do that. I got to make, I got to make more of this stuff for the people. This is my jam. Absolutely. It's a great lead generator too, man. So you're doing a phenomenal and, and job. Once, once I, once I am committed to it, then I will justify the microphone, Keith. Man, you're, you're the real deal. I don't know. I'm a gearhead. So, all right. That was awesome, man. And thanks for having me on your show. I'm going to share this to my social channels at Keith Kelfus and Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all that. Do you got an Instagram yet? No. You think I should? Do I, need Dude, I was trying to find you on there. At least if you just have something that people can that find one. you, because I want to share all this to Instagram too and tag people back to you. So. All right. Cool. All right. I'll have to get that going. So many things to do. I got to get out of this bookkeeping. I mean, like, have an awesome bookkeeping team they're better than i am i gotta stop getting in their way let them do the bookkeeping so i can do this well hey man i need to learn some more business automation and finance stuff like you know maybe we can help each other out I'm all down. right y'all hey uh happy tuesday i'll see you. tomorrow night we'll be live at the normal time 8 p.m central 9 eastern with bennett grove assuming he's able to make it this time talking about junk removal stuff and uh, all kinds of cool stuff he's got going on in the meantime Kalfus, thanks for joining me on a whim. And uh, thanks for plugging this idea into my head so we could rant a little bit. This is oh, fun. bro, I appreciate it. You're so smart. It's insane. So, all right, later, guys. All right. See you guys.